Hello, I am Dr. R. D. Khare, pediatrician from Mumbai. Today we will consider a very common problem, the cough. The cough is a reflex, reflex, which means it's a protective reflex. That means it has an afferent arc, a center, and an efferent arc. Let's just see where are the cough receptors situated in the respiratory tract. They are there in the nasopharynx and posterior pharyngeal wall. Therefore, anything which irritates this can give rise to cough, like a post nasal drip or something like sinusitis. There are minimum or no cough receptors in tonsillitis, and therefore, even severe tonsillitis may give rise to hardly any cough but very high fever. The down below we go in larynx and upper trachea, the cough receptors are to a maximum extent and therefore trachea and even the bronchial tree and inferior part of larynx when they are involved in a viral infection or in any other pathology cough is a very prominent symptom as we go down the respiratory tract the cough becomes less and less prominent and then breathlessness becomes more prominent as we go to smaller airways in fact the terminal airways there are hardly any cough receptors and breathlessness at this stage is a common manifestation when the pathology affects that area. In the pulmonary parenchyma, there aren't many cough receptors. Therefore, in pneumonia, cough is not a prominent symptom. There may be some cough unless it is also associated and pneumonia is also associated with the tracheobronchitis. However, in the pulmonary capillaries, and also in the interstitial lung tissue. In the capillaries, wall of the capillaries, there are cough receptors. So we know where the cough receptors are situated, to what extent, and when to expect cough as a relatively prominent symptom. Now when we consider cough as a symptom, let us divide cough into two parts. One, cough is the chief or the main complaint or the single complaint. And another cough and fever are two complaints. Both are chief complaints. Both are equally affecting the person. When cough is the chief complaint and mainly the cough is a complaint and the fever is not there, therefore inflammation of bacteria, viruses, etc. or even other immunological processes, infiltrative diseases are less likely. So when we consider that, let us divide it into cough without fever due to upper airway obstruction, upper airway problem and lower airway. In upper airway problem, it is basically a post nasal drip which goes down the nasopharynx and pharynx and something which comes up from below which is gastroesophageal reflux. So these two problems can give rise to cough and there may be no fever. Then we come to low respiratory problems without fever with a cough as a prominent symptom. Now here I may tell you that again we can divide the cough for clinical approach in the form of cough as a single and only pathology for the first time. Number two, recurrent cough and number three, chronic cough. Let me tell you recurrent chron and chronic are two different problems. In recurrent, there is an interval of disorder followed by some interval where the individual is free from symptoms. And therefore, in the recurrent cough, the growth of a person may not be affected as much as in a chronic persistent disorder. So we divide the cough without fever into upper airways and lower airways. And in lower airways, we will consider cough as one-time symptom. There has not been any history of significant cough in that particular person and now he is brought to you for persistent significant cough. Two important causes, foreign body inhalation and pertussis. Quite typical history for both. In foreign body inhalation, often the onset of cough is sudden, so not only acute sudden, that means at a particular time, say at 11 o'clock, the person was not coughing at, 
at 11.15, 11.30, he was coughing very badly. In addition, often there may be history of choking or gagging after which the illness or the complaints have started. Foreign body inhalation is a fairly common, not so much these days, so previously it used to be accident in children. And therefore my message is, nutty foods like sindana, chana, pasta, vidam, etc. should not be given to children as such but they must be given because they are good but in the powdered or pasted form and that is one of the ways of prevention of relatively common accident in children because if it goes in the lung well it can be removed but if it gets stuck in the middle in the airway where the airway is single the problem can be grave. The second problem is pertussis. Though the vaccination is still there, pertussis is still seen in more in adults than in children these days. Sometimes the recognition of a pertussis may be not easy because we don't think of pertussis as a common cause of or one of the causes of pertussis and cough in adults. But if you go to the history of the type of cough and often there may be a similar history that may be there in the contact, then the diagnosis is very simple because persistent spasmodic cough going on and on starts slowly and reaches a peak by day 7, day 8 and takes even 8 to 10 weeks to subside and bouts of spasmodic cough are followed by what is known as a whoop which is a sudden inspiratory sound after expiratory bark like <gasps> that kind of thing. So pertussis and foreign body are causes of cough in a person who never had history of cough. The second history is acute but recurrent cough and the commonest cause of one of the acute and recurrent cough or the most common is hyperreactive airway including asthma. Often the history has there is there are episodes of cough usually not associated with fever often associated with a runny nose cough is worse at night and early morning because that's the time allergic problems are the worst and there may be other allergic manifestations like allergic rhino conjunctivitis or allergic dermatitis etc. The common cause wherein bronchodilators are often effective. There may be sometimes no wheezing on auscultation, the cough variant asthma, but the response to bronchodilator is appropriate. Hence, cough acute but recurrent. The commonest cause is hyperreactive airway, either atopic or non-atopic. Then we come to chronic causes. Chronic cough, upper airway, again is as a result of sinusitis or post-nasal discharge. There is an irritant cough or it can be gastroesophageal reflux. And in gastrophageal reflux, the reflux which comes to the throat is also a cause but sometimes the acid reflux which goes to the lower part of esophagus also reflexly goes on stimulating keeping the cough persistent on and off and therefore gastroesophageal reflux is also considered a chronic cause of cough usually without fever. Then we come to the cause of cough associated with fever and in fever we will take it again short onset fever or short duration fever and a prolonged fever and again we will try and consider upper airways and lower airways. Significant fever with upper airway manifestations producing cough can usually be sinusitis or an infection of the sinuses or sometimes pharyngitis but not so much of tonsillitis. Acute onset inflammation, infection usually bacterial but more often viral than bacterial. The low respiratory infections as a cough and fever of short duration are usually inflammations. Infections producing inflammations and infection can be bacterial or viral and they are relatively common. In acute bacterial or viral infections of the low respiratory tract like bronchitis commonest is acute bronchitis or lung parenchymal infections like pneumonias, lung abscess or sometimes recurrent but not without much fever can be bronchiectasis. Now 
one thing is always to be remembered whenever we talk of any chronic or for that matter acute anxiety is one is the age of the person and the second is whether this particular entity has affected the general health of the child it may be subtle and the patient may not complain of that for example chronic fatigue loss of weight loss of act, loss of activity not being able to do certain things low grade inactivity going on tells you that though the manifestations are apparently acute or of short duration this gentleman or person has a long standing chronic disorder going on for a long time and another thing to be remembered is look at the age of a person for example these manifestations especially fever and cough related to a child the problem is entirely different in a child child who has persistent recurrent cough with or without fever the approach is different and therefore in a child less than 6 months we consider three important things as chronic persistent problems with or without fever one is congenital malformations of the respiratory tract second is immunological disorders and third is metabolic diseases so in a child with this complaint the approach is different and in any individual who has chronic subtle manifestations which affects his general health the causes are different now finally we come to a chronic disorder producing cough and fever and chronic disorder with cough and fever we inquire about the general health of an individual and then we come we find that often the causes may be multiple and often they may be quite significant and some of them may be serious so if we have a person who has a chronic cough and fever due to low respiratory infection think of a serious disorder especially when affecting the general condition of the child it can be <clears throat> an infiltration of the airways and some tumor inside endo like an endobranchial tuberculosis or it can be a compression from outside like a tuberculous or sarcoid gland or it can be inflammation of the bronchial or airway wall wall itself due to some infiltrative disease or it can be infiltration of the lung or interstitial disease like interstitial lung disease so in a chronic cough especially associated with fever and more so with general affection of the patient the problem is different this is in general therefore a simple approach to cough to summarize therefore cough occurs in certain diseases it can be only cough as a prominent symptom and of with fever and without fever and we consider upper airways and lower airways an important thing is lower airways with fever and a persistent cough more so by affecting a general health are rather serious number 2 all these symptoms occurring in a small child requires an entirely different uh, consideration we may remember that even the cardiac condition can give rise to recurrent cough especially in a child due to congenital heart disease and thirdly the most important cause of cough namely recurrent cough namely allergic cough may be asthma is one of the commonest cause that we see in practice as a recurrent cause for which the child is or the adult is born thank you very much